Hi folks, let's walk through how we would quote three different relatively simple and straightforward machining jobs. Hopefully this video can help you if you're getting started as a job shop or want to learn how to quote things better or just see how somebody else does it. We're going to walk through our basic setup of how we think about the time and the cost as well as do some material checks online for free and use Zometry to get a pricing check. Let's take a look at this hub. It's a relatively small part. It's a four inch in Y dimension. 3 eighths of an inch thick raw material, and we'll have it saw cut to 3.4 inches. We used our Fusion 360 templates to really quickly get an idea of the cam cycle times. And we do that by right clicking, create from template, and we've saved all these templates that we have for our different machines and different materials and different types of parts. And we actually offer those over on the NYC CNC website where folks can sign up and download those templates. But they're a really great example of quickly getting to cam that's Certainly not ready to run, but very close. And in this example, we'd be decking off the raw material. I decided to use a through spindle coolant drill, which we keep on stock to drill through these four center pockets, as well as the three outside holes. We would then do the adaptives to get rid of the remaining inside material, a contour to clean it up, and a chamfer on some of those parts. Now this is not completed cam, and that's not the goal here. I'm just quoting this part. I can tell you already that this is the type of part that I'm going to have a difficult time quoting on because it's so simple. There's very little in this part that I'm going to be able to offer to a customer that's super value added. This type of part would generally be low tolerance. We don't have a print here to see any specific tolerances, but what a lot of shops look for is how can they add value to make a little bit more money on a part. So more difficult to use materials, tighter tolerances, more complex geometry, more complex work holding, things like that. Cookie cutter parts like this that are relatively easy to make, that are more competitive to quote on. So if you think there's a chance that you can quote this thing and make money, that's great. If not, we either will pass on bidding or we try to get a quote done real quick so that we don't spend too much time. Op one, we'd be holding the raw material in a vise and we've got easy access to all this center geometry. For op two, we'd have this work completed. So we'd pull it out and I use a center locating hub with some hold down clamps through these three pockets and one locating feature to clock the part. Once that's done, we've got the ability to finish an adaptive strategy for the outside of the part, contour, and clean it up. Again, this isn't quite fully completed cam, but it gives me an idea that these two cycle times together as programmed are about four minutes. Now, if we take 60 minutes an hour and divide it by four minutes per part, that's 15 parts. Do I really think I can make 15 parts per hour? Definitely not, especially if it's a lower quantity. So let's keep that in mind. But now that I've got the cam figured out, I know that I'm comfortable ordering this material size. So let's go ahead and take a look. If you head to myalro.com, one of the things I like, we actually buy a lot of our material from Alro, but anybody without creating an account can make use of this. So click buy metals. We're going to choose aluminum bar, 6061 extrusion, and it'll be the flat bar. And now I'll pick the dimension A as our thickness. 3 eighths of an inch. Our dimension B is our width. That was our four inches. And then we're going to custom cut this. I'll click next. And we're going to say quantity 10. Actually, I'd probably order 11 at 3.4 inches. Add items to cart. And you're going to get a price. And this is probably going to be pretty expensive relative to doing this in higher quantity. But the reality is Doing things in small volumes can be expensive on programming time, on setup time, and on the raw material side. So something like $10.62. So we've got our quote template here. I'll be honest, sometimes I don't fill all this information out, especially if it's a quick job or something I'm not sure we're going to end up winning. But I've got 3.4 typed in here, 4 inches, 375, and our material cost is 1062 per piece. Uh, the way I leave this sheet set up, it's got a 15% markup. Again, that varies depending on the type of the job and how competitive we need to be. But we almost always mark the material up some amount. And that reflects right here, the $12.21 is that $10.62 after it's been marked up. So op one, they're not doing any bandsaw. Op two, machine edges to size. What I'd actually do on this is we don't like sending parts out with unmachined faces. So op one, we'd be able to deck the top of it but we'd finish the part in op two, and that would have never left us with a chance to machine this backside down. So what I'd actually probably do is an op zero, where all we'd be doing is a face down on the backside. That way when we start 
op one with the opposite side, we can deck it off and then we've got all features of this part to be machined. Just a pride of quality and, and work and look. The alternative is your customer may be okay or they may actually want a tumbled finish, in which case you don't necessarily have to do that. But be conscious when you're ordering the raw material. Card here to our video on tips and tricks for ordering raw material. But oftentimes we will cut and paste this text in each email, clarifying what the material is, Sometimes we need it to be U.S. material, sometimes not. And sometimes we need certification, sometimes not. Material must be free of dings and debts. Please deliver on a pallet or box protected during shipment. Do not place loose in bag. Our saw cut tolerances. And when we're ordering full bars, we like to put this disclaimer in that we don't want bent or bowed bars. This just stems from having ordered material over the course of years. With many of our suppliers, we frankly wouldn't need to include this, but we like to include it every time because we have every once in a while had material show up in a burlap bag, all scratched up and all dinged up. Having it in the email just protects our butts. So op one, we'll just do quick face and we'll say that's a dollar. Op two is really the vice work. If Fusion's telling me two minutes, I gotta think, okay, two minutes means I could do 30 parts per hour. I don't think I'd be able to get to that just yet with loading time and not optimizing this, especially at lower quantities. So let's say we could say we could do 20 parts an hour. And this is pretty simple work. When I think about how we could bill for this sort of work or what a customer is going to expect to pay, I'm going to think it's on the low end, which is like sort of $75 an hour. So $75 an hour divided by 20 means I've got something like $3.75 for op one machining. Op three is fixture and finish. Same methodology, similar cycle time. I'm gonna go with the same cost, 375, nothing else left on it. Nope, I just realized we goofed on our material. The cost not there so was supposed to be the full cost, 116.77, there we go. We've got some fixed cost items here. This is left over from the last job that we quoted. I'm gonna zero them out for now. So our fancy spreadsheet has told us that the total would be about $220. But now we've gotta forget about this spreadsheet. If they're only ordering a quantity of 10, some amount of a minimum is going to come into play here. The minimum amount of time to set up, to interact with the customer, to get this project ordered, done, machined, and shipped back to them. And that's going to increase the cost quite a bit. And you can think about that in terms of the CAD and CAM programming time. We've got to make a, a custom fixture for our OP2. And that depends on how hungry you are, what your capacity is, and how much you need the work. But I would expect for somebody to go through this job and perhaps they'll get it done completely in sort of a morning they're gonna probably wanna make between two and $300 of profit. So I'm going to start to think about using these levers here like programming and CAD and CAM to help drive up the individual part per cost to get me to where I'm making enough money. So if we said it was $250 for sort of that cushion we need, it's not really programming the CAM. And instead of soft jaws, it's really the custom fixture, but let's say it's a hundred bucks for that. Again, that's not necessarily meant to be what the fixture costs, but rather a proxy for thinking how much are we making. And we'll change these to a one. So now we're starting to look at a price per part of in the $50 to $60 range, which would make us what's called a contribution margin. So that's the total amount that we're billing less our actual cash costs, which here would really only be the raw material. We would most likely have the tooling and the requirements for the fixturing on hand. And the fixturing could just be a piece of scrap material. So that's a little bit higher than what I'd need. So I'd probably just pull this out. And that's going to leave me with a profit you know, to get this job done probably in a morning for a quantity of 10 of $335, uh, again, a contribution margin to me. And that puts us at a bid price of about, of about $47, uh, $48 a piece. Now here's my concern. I suspect that that price is going to be high to the customer. Again, depends on what the customer is doing with it and who they are, but it's difficult to make money. It's difficult to be profitable and to do a lot of this sort of small job work over the course of a month or a year and make a lot of money. At quantity 100, this job gets a lot more interesting because we've got the chance to make some real money. So we want to put our best foot forward on the bid. Our material price drops substantially, $4.07, $406.53 for the complete job. For now, I'll wipe out our fixed costs like programming at the cam, or in this case, again, the fixture will be quite simple for OP2 and made out of a piece of scrap. No custom material or expensive clamps. And I'll take a look at what the longest cycle times are, and they're the adaptive strategies, and I could probably improve the cycle times on both of these, but they're also relatively short operations. Even if you shave 30% off a of one minute, 12 seconds cycle time, you're not changing that much in the overall time to complete the job. Take a look at the $13.27 per part, and I'll look at what we're actually making profit-wise off of the job. 
And I'd bump that up a little, going back to the fact that we do have to spend some time optimizing that cam and we've got to make a quick fixture. And again, it goes back to what do you think the customer wants to pay for this job and who do you think you're going to be competing against? One of the things you can do well at as a machine shop when you're coding work is selling not just on the part that goes in the box, but on your communication, on the quality, on the packaging, and maybe even some design for manufacturing tips. One of the things that we noticed on this part is it's got some relatively tight inside corners and radii. And we could, if we could change those, say, from 0.15 inches to 0.25 inches, and Fusion's really cool. It lets us take that, I can just hit delete, get rid of it, and quickly recreate that fillet. Say 2.6 out of by 2. And a lot of times what we'll do is we'll send short screencast videos, card here to the NYC CNC page on how to create quick and free screen videos. But customers love this because this helps us make the parts better. They may not care about it. And in fact, it's pretty common to have folks that are either designers or engineers who aren't familiar with some of the limitations of how parts get machined. Uh, and that can really help. Nevertheless, there's an element of, of your gut of how much money do you simply want to make. $1,000 to run 10 of these. Is that enough money for you to be happy that you made this job? Would you be willing to do it for less or would you like to pay more? I'd be happy to pass on this job if somebody wants to do it for less. And in fact, I'm still looking at this and thinking, I probably want a little bit more. Uh, and you know, I may actually have to buy a couple more pieces of material. We could put that in under custom tools just to say, hey, I'm gonna probably buy three extra pieces of material. So we'll say 15, maybe 20 bucks. Because the reality is I'm probably not gonna buy 100 pieces of material because that assumes everyone is made perfectly. So what this is putting at is something like $15.50 a piece. The other thing you can do to check your quote is, in this case, we're gonna use Zometry. You have to create an account, but it's free. We can drag our CAD file, drop it, click Modify Part, change the process to CNC machining, pick our material as aluminum. And normally I don't worry about changing the tap holes, finish, tolerances, etc. Click Save Properties. We look at quantity 10. I was at $47 a piece. Zometry is at $58 a piece. I'm actually not surprised. One of the things I've learned of running jobs through Zometry is their pricing tends to be a lot more efficient as soon as you get to the $1,000 total job threshold and over. In other words, Zometry tends to be a little bit expensive on the jobs that are well under $1,000. But nevertheless, it tells us we're decently in line. And if we jump to quantity 100, I suspect Zometry will be quite efficient and sure, sure enough, we were at $15.42. And I'm knowing I'm, I'm bidding that a little bit high in the sense that I'm okay to lose that. And I suspect there are shops out there that would do that for a few bucks less. And this is a great example. Zometry is at 100 for $14.33, which is kind of cool. You could literally just get these parts made that way. The second part is actually a part that's near and dear to my heart. It's one of the brackets in the first product that we ever brought to market. And it's the reason I got into CNC machining. The good news about this part is that both faces can remain an extrusion finish. So we don't need to machine them. And that means we can purchase the raw material in a bar stock form at its current thickness of 0.5 inches. That means we can buy stock that is four and a half by 5.75 inches. So let's hop over to my Alro and let's find out if those fractional sizes are available. Buy metals, aluminum bars, 6061 extrusion flat. A we know is half inch. And we've got some flexibility on either four and a half or five and three quarter. So they have four and a half, not surprisingly, they don't have five and three quarters. So let's use the four and a half inch as the width, and then we'll saw cut it, custom cut list, we'll saw cut it to the 5.75. That's our X dimension here. 5.75 leaves us plenty of room to clean up uh, around all edges. We'll order 11 at 5.75 inches, add items to cart. Your Alro shopping cart price will go down as you add more items to your cart. So just be aware of that. For example, right now we're at 12.75 a piece. If I delete these other items, we see that price go up to 14.45. So you're going to be better off either getting an account with your metal supplier or with Alro to get more accurate pricing. Or sometimes what we'll do is we'll just add a few different items to our cart if we think we're going to be buying more, and that'll help drive that price down to a slightly more accurate price. Quantity 10. Our material price was 158.90. Our material price shows us slightly higher because I'm buying one extra piece as a potential test or scrap piece. 
While we're here, though, let's just take a look. 1445 now. What's that going to go to if we change the order size to 102? $8.21. So that gives us an idea of what the material price could be at a higher quantity. What makes this part difficult or expensive to machine are the number of setups. And believe it or not, as simple as this part looks, it's actually a great candidate for five axis machining in the form of three plus two. But what I would do is use a three axis machine and first machine out these two features. And then we would place it on the five axis machine using one or both of these features for our work holding. And that's going to give us full access to the perimeter of the part and to do all of our orientation so that we can spot, drill, tap, and chamfer the holes on the top, on the back side, and on the bottom. The problem is that when you're using a five axis machine, you're gonna to wanna to charge a higher rate per hour because that machine costs more money. My next best option would be to use a fourth axis. So op one would be the same. We'd machine these interior features, then we'd transfer it over to another three axis fixture. We'd use those features to hold it from the inside. That way we had full access to the outside profile where we'd walk all the way around it. Then we could use that same feature to hold it on the hub of a fourth axis and we'd be able to come around, spot drill tap our features as well as clean up those sharp inside bottom corners. From a design for manufacturing standpoint, there isn't a lot that we can do with this part and I know that because it was our own product. But even though it's a more complex part, what it did was take the place of many other parts in a prior design. So yes, it's going to be a little bit more expensive to produce than I wish it was, but it embraces the design philosophy of it's okay to make something a little bit more complex if it can take the place of many other parts. The final way to machine the part is similar to the fourth axis strategy, but we're just manually indexing the part with, with a vise or custom fixtures or work stops. It would work just fine, and in fact, you could have multiple parts on the machine in different fixtures at the same time. And if we were just prototyping, we would actually buy thicker stock, probably use the super glue technique, and doing that would allow Op1 to machine all of these inside features as well as walk around the outside profile. Quoting this at quantity 10, the price I came up with per part was $75. That lets us earn about $560, which goes towards our labor and our profit. There is a little bit more risk in this. I've got to make a couple of fixtures. We've got some potential tolerancing that needs to be carried through setups. And similar to the first part, there's the difficulty of scaling up relatively small jobs to make enough profit to keep your business functional, depending on where you are with regard to things like overhead. So let's see what Zometry charges. $84 a piece. Actually really good information there. They're thinking that there's an inaccessible corner. I think that's probably just a mistake in their algorithm because you're, you'd be holding this part to drill and tap these holes such that you would be able to get an end mill in there. But it is a good point that when at all possible, you want to avoid those sharp corners. And most importantly, it tells me we're probably in the right ballpark for low quantity. At quantity 100, our material price drops quite a bit, and I would shave a few dollars off these operations because we have some efficiencies. I may be willing to drop the CAM programming costs, but I've still got to make a few fixtures, so I'll leave $100 as a proxy for some of that work. And that's going to push us into the low $30 per part with a contribution margin of about $2,300. Now let's do a sanity check. So I've got this part. I'm going to want to try to maximize productivity. So if we've got let's say five operations because we're doing it all on a vertical. Op one, we're gonna do machine the inside features. Op two, we'll hold from those inside features with a fixture, machine the outside. Op three, we'll do the top. Four, we'll do the side. Five, we'll do the bottom. So between a couple of custom fixtures and maybe a one or two vices or even the dual station vices, I think we could have all five ops running at the same time, which is great. That can really help increase productivity. And the cycle times will be fast. Uh, on a modern machining center, we can blow through this aluminum. We're really talking about probably one minute or two minutes max per op. So there are five ops and we've got to load the parts. Let's say 10 minutes, just rough numbers here. So 100 parts times 10 minutes, 1,000 minutes divided by 60, 16 hours. Now I've got to make some fixtures as well. I've got to get it set up. So it's going to take more than two days at that rate if we win the job. Making $2,300 across two or three days starts to get to a number that really could make sense. Again, that depends on your overhead. And there's probably some things we could do to increase that efficiency level. But I generally, just being honest, don't want to invest the time in actually calculating that stuff out until we figure out if we win it. But this passes my sniff test of being a reasonable bid. So let's see what Zometry charges at 100. <laughs> 31.47. I swear I didn't do this ahead of time, folks. That's awesome. 
again, tells us where we're in the right ballpark. The last part is a little bit different. We've got some 3D surfacing on this toolpath. We'll use three quarter inch by one and a half saw cut to 5.5 inches. Now on jobs that are this small, a lot of times you're gonna find better pricing from a retail type store like McMaster. And in this case, we can buy the same material in six inch saw cut pieces for quite a bit less than Alro. And this is a great example where templates can really help improve your quoting because depending on what the customer is trying to do, you have the chance to add some high quality 3D toolpaths to make the surfacing elements of this part look really good. Great from template. Cause aluminum. The best way to use templates is to have too many operations because it's quite quick to delete the ones you don't need. We're using a 3D scallop toolpath with the goal of getting a good cycle time estimation before we worry about the perfect toolpath. And under your name, preferences, cam, I've got show operation machining time checked. And I love that because it gives me a preview right here in the operation. This is a two minute cycle that starts to look like the right direction. There's some cleanup work to do, but we'll first we'll take a quick look at what the simulation would show. The visual results of a simulation are far from perfect, but you can, as you scroll and start to get an idea of what that scallop height will look like. And ch changes in cycle time are fairly linear. So this is a two minute operation right now. If we cut our step over in half to have less scallop height, that'll probably drive the cycle time up by a factor of two. And sure enough, almost exactly just that. So this is where you've got to rely on your experience as a machinist and using tooling as well as understanding what the customer wants to do to get an idea for what that cycle time will be. We're using a 3 8 inch bullnose end mill with a 60 thou corner rad, which is helpful because the same tool is able to do the surfacing on both the outside and the inside geometry. The work holding here is relatively simple. We'd use the excess material on the bottom with a traditional vise and parallels to do all of our work in op one, including the facing outside profile and the surfacing. And then we'd flip it over and hold it between these two edges and deck off and finish the part. Machining time on op one calculates right now, will round up to seven minutes. We'll say another two minutes to flip it. So nine minutes, 60 minutes an hour divided by nine minutes means I could make between six and seven parts per hour. I feel like we could probably improve on that a little bit, but still we're looking at a few hours total to machine all of these. So I would say $100 an hour for this sort of machining work divided by six parts per hour means you're at about $16 per part. When we flip it and deck it, say $3. And on the quantity 10, that's just not enough. So we can either increase the machining cost here, or we can just add in another, some programming time to drive that quote up. This feels like something where I want to make about $400 to run 10 of these. So we're going to end up at around $50 per part. And on a part like this, I wouldn't necessarily completely finish the programming before I started the part. In other words, I may let it run the adaptive while I'm still working on some of the scallop toolpaths, or while it's running the first part on a scallop toolpath, I may be looking at ways that we can optimize or further improve that cycle time. At quantity 100, our material price goes down. I dropped the machining price down, both because I know we could run this faster if we spent some time to optimize the cam, but also this is a relatively easy job. So if we had the chance to bid 100, to be able to run these and make a contribution margin of $1,700, that's a win, that's a good job to take. So we'd be at about $23 per part. Zometry at quantity 100 smoked us on this one. We're at $23.16, their quote at quantity 100, $17.84. So they're either very competitive on this or I just bid it too high. Hope you folks learned something, hope you enjoyed. We love machining, but we also love manufacturing entrepreneurship. So be sure to check out the nyccnt.com website for more information on running your machine shop, operations, factory tours, CAD and CAM and more. Take care folks, see you soon.